Hi, welcome. My name is Dr. Marcy Stone, and I am here to talk to you about leading organizational change. This is your course title. We're going to be talking about Unit 2, and this is the video that accompanies your study guide. Your course layout and overview. So Unit 2 is Change Management Models and Methods. These are your learning outcomes for Unit 2. So compare the various change models, theories, and methods in a given situation. Determine which change model might work best in a given organization. Analyze the change management framework in a given organization, and then outline the change management model. So these are all of the things that we're going to do. So why are learning outcomes important? Every one of your learning outcomes ties back to your course materials and your content, ties back to your questions on your um, exams, and then to each learning outcome you're reviewing in this video. So here are our overview topics. We've got change models, theories, and methods, how to determine which change model to choose, analyze the change management framework, and then outline the change management model. These are your vocabulary terms from your study guide. Uh, some of these we're going to be actually covering in this video. So we have first comparing the various change models, theories, and methods. So some of the questions that we talked about in the study guide are what are change models and how can they be used in business today? Why is it important to understand change management theories and methods? And then how can change be used to move a business forward? So we've got change models, theories, and methods. These terms are almost used interchangeably. Some of them are called change models. Others they will specifically call methods. Some of them don't even have that type of word after them. But they're important to understand in business today so that we can utilize these to grow businesses and thrive. So change models can help affect change so that the business can move through the change and then grow into the future. With a change model, a business may be able to effectively move through change and may struggle to make required updates. When trying to to make change and then choose a change model, you also need to take into consideration the type of business you want to change. So you can't just choose one of these and say it's gonna work for every business because it won't. So for example, a small retail business who wants to expand and open another store, they may have different needs than a large company who has a production line and wants to make product development and their production line more efficient. There are numerous types of change models, theories, and methods. So a few of these include what you see here on this slide. We've got Cotter's eight-step change model. We've got um, Lean Six Sigma, Kaizen. There's also uh, Lewin's change model, which we'll talk a little bit about. So they all assist organizations to make change and show a clear path to engaging employees to help with that change. And the most popular one is probably Cotter's eight-step change model. So it provides very clear directions, very clear steps, uh, and then about how to make that change and then how to keep it in effect even after the change kind of set in motion. Kaizen is another popular change model, and it ensures progress by making small, manageable changes that lead to great change. Lean Six Sigma works with companies, uh, works really well with companies that have production lines or that need to kind of better flow in their company to help them manage productivity. Each change model may be matched with the company and their individual needs. So how do you determine which change model might work best? And then what are the variables when considering when to cho choose a change model? And then is there anybody that can help? Like, are you just, if you're the manager or a CEO of a company, are you just on your own? Or are there people that kind of help you to decide which change model might be best for your needs? So depending on those needs and where the company is at the time that they need, the change model required might be different. For example, I kind of talked about in the last section, production line business might work best with Lean Six Sigma because the focus is on reviewing flow 
of the business and eliminating waste. Then we have Lewin's change model. The, they analyze a three-step model that includes unfreezing the current state, moving towards that change, and then freezing it in that new uh, state of change. So this model helps to understand why change much, must occur and how to move through that process. This model might work best in a business that is good at adjusting or has a history of creating positive change. So by analyzing the needs of the business and then reviewing all of your change model options, you can easily match the correct model with the type of business. Another option might be to hire a change management expert who can assist with choosing the correct change model managing that change needed and then ensuring employee. In the last unit, we talked about how important it is to have that employee buy-in. If you do not get the employee buy-in, you're going to struggle making those changes because they're the ones that make the change. They're the ones that if they co decide collectively as a group that they're not going to make the change, then it will halt all progress. So it is really important to take that into consideration when you're choosing a change model um, and when you're considering what changes need to be made. So here is just a little slide that kind of explains the three-step process for Lewin's change model. Um, it's essentially three steps. You've got unfreeze, then you make the change, then you refreeze. And you are looking in this first step, um, the process of changing entails creating a perception that the change is actually needed. So you might want to create a sense of urgency in that case, but you have to convince the employees and ensure that they're ready for change. So this might include um, letting them know well in advance that it's coming have meetings to explain exactly what's going to happen or what needs to happen. And then you can kind of move to that unfreeze stage and then slowly move into the change stage at that point. Um, and then um, you're gonna move towards the new desired change or level of behavior, whatever it is, maybe a change in behavior that you're looking for. And then finally, you can solidify that new behavior as the norm. Okay, then we have analyzing your change management framework. So what is change management framework? How can a change management framework be used in business? Why is it important to understand change management framework? So creating a framework to understand and affect change is important before choosing a change model. So change management framework is another term for change model, but it will also allow you to understand what changes are needed. Every company will use a change management model a little bit differently based on their needs. So for example, we have Netflix who use uh, Lewin's change model, but then what they really decided, they had to decide first of all, what they were going to change, how they were going to do it, and then what change model they chose. And so they used Lewin's to make that change, that three-step process of you know, unfreezing, making the change, and then refreezing. So they decided that they wanted to expand outside of the United States, but how do they do that? So they started making content, and if you're a Netflix subscriber, you already know this, you've probably seen quite a few things made in different countries, they're in different languages, you'll have English subtitles in there, but they decided, we, how do we expand? Um, we have so many members within the United States, the only thing that made sense is for them to expand outside of the United States. So they had to consider different cultures, they had to consider different countries, they started making quite a bit of content in those countries, and then presented those shows to everyone. Um, you can be in Japan and watching something that was made in Spain on Netflix. Um, now they have the content, which is, is amazing actually at this point, they're roughly 60% of the shows that they offer on Netflix are their own that they've made. And they used Lewin's change model to kind of create that change um, and then created the framework to work specifically for them. So. Understanding company culture, people, um, important processes, and also your desired outcomes is really important to determine <laughs> if a change management framework is needed to, to implement a solid plan. 
So any new processes that need to be created or potential company structure changes should be considered when you're choosing your change management framework. All right, and then why is it important? So some of the questions to consider when we look at outlining the change management model are, why is it important to review or outline or even plan a change management model? What can you do better to understand which change model you need to choose? And then how can you determine what change management model might work best in a business? So once you've researched the best change management model for your organization, it will be important to outline what changes are necessary and how they're going to be implemented. Each change management model includes steps for analyzing and creating that change. Planning this change will require attention to detail and an outline of how the organization is going to implement that change. And then this kind of shows you, um, I already mentioned that Cotter's eight step change model is probably one of the most popular. It's also one of the most detailed when it has to making and listing its steps, kind of see them here um, from the bottom left all the way up to, you know, the make it stick and we're, we've implemented it. Now we have to just maintain them. Um, but in this, they're looking at creating a sense of urgency, removing any obstacles. Sometimes as a leader, that's going to be your responsibility is making sure that your employees can actually make the change without any obstacles in the way. Um, fostering the change that it's been made. Um, each of these steps kind of important to understand and then apply to, in a, I guess at the same time, to the actual business that you're trying to implement change for. So understanding the business culture, understanding current management styles, and then those employee needs have to be considered when you're creating an outline for how the change will be implemented. So here you only see eight steps, but maybe each of these steps takes months of work and planning. Maybe they take a week, maybe they take a day. Um, it really just depends on what change is needed, what the company itself is looking for, and then looking at each of these steps and how do we relate that to our business and how do we implement that. All right, so in conclusion, these are the things that we discussed in this video. Compare the various change models, theories, and methods in a given situation. Determine which change model might work best. Analyze the change management framework, and then outline the change management model in a given organization. All right, and then what's next? So in the next video, we're going to discuss unit three, and it's on organizational failures in change management. Thank you.